Hi, everybody, and welcome to Quick Takes with the Diverse Learners Cooperative. Today, we're talking about how to pull key takeaways from your students' access reports. If you're unfamiliar with the DLC, we are an organization whose mission is to equip and empower teachers and leaders to serve all students. Today's goals are these. By the end of this video, you will be able to read and understand the school-wide and student-level access reports, name exited students and students who met the growth standards, and identify trends based on overall strengths and challenges. The first thing that we need to answer is this, what is access? The access test is the English language proficiency exam taken in the spring by all multilingual students. There's four domains, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. The scores show us what students can do in each domain. Access scores have a ton of potential uses from determining student placement to guiding the creation of new curriculum. Test scores are best used in decision-making situations such as establishing when multilingual learners have attained English language proficiency according to state criteria, which in the state of Tennessee is a 4.4 overall and a 4.2 in literacy. It also could be used in the decision about informing classroom instruction and assessment or monitoring student progress annually using scores from multiple years in a row. It helps us establish a baseline to track future growth in students where we only have one year of scores. It can help us decide on staffing numbers, how many EL teachers we need, and we can make decisions this way about program entry and exit. There's three types of scores that you'll see on the reports. You'll have a raw score, which is the actual number of items or tasks that the student responded correctly to. This score is kind of like a starting point since it doesn't take item difficulty into account, it doesn't really help us understand student performance. So for this reason, the raw scores aren't included on the score reports that you see. The ones that we'll be looking more at are the scale scores, which do take item difficulty into account. So educators can use them to examine groups of students or student performances over time. We also will look at, most importantly to me, proficiency level scores, which are an interpretation of those scale scores. And on access tests, they align to the six WIDA language proficiency levels. So now that we know what the test is, let's talk about school-wide reports. Once you get the school-wide report, you'll see the student roster report. This contains information about a group of students within a single school and grade. It provides a concise way to look at the results of a group of students at the same time. Let's look at an example. In this example, you'll see the student names listed in alphabetical order on the left. At the top, you can see the test tier and domain for each column. Underneath each of those, you'll find the student scores in the same row as their name. There's scores for each domain of the test, and then there's scores that are combinations of those testing scores. These are calculated in a couple of ways. For oral language, we have 50% reading score and 50% speaking score. For literacy, it's 50% reading and 50% writing. Comprehension is 70% reading and 30% listening. And the overall score is calculated by 35% of reading and writing, and then 15% each for speaking and listening. To use this report, you can look for patterns in student performance, which will help you inform things like class placement, work groups that you might use in a class. So you might put all the students that are a level three in one group so that you can give them appropriate supports. You might pair students or use this to determine students that could use different or additional support. So this helps us see the trends overall for each grade level or group of students. The next main report style that you're gonna see are the student reports or individual score reports. You'll see them named both. The individual score report shows all the scores for an individual student and provides brief descriptions of each proficiency level and has lots of visual support on the paper. Translated copies of these can be sent home with students and you can use them to discuss conferences with parents and guardians or with other educators. These are helpful to use when your focus is on one student at a time. 
You can also use the interpretive rubrics from WIDA when you're looking at these scores. The report looks like this. At the top, you'll find student information. Underneath that, you'll see a breakdown of student scores by language domain. And at the very bottom, you'll see that those scores are connected to student can-dos, goals and expectations for what each student can do at each language proficiency level. The top part, <clears throat> excuse me, is a closer look at the language domain scores. You can see the colors that show the four tests that the student took. So this student had a 4.0 in listening, 2.2 in speaking, a 3.4 in reading, and a 3.5 in writing. The composite scores for the additional markers are below. Here's a look at the can-do section. So each student has a number assigned to them based on that proficiency score that we saw above. These are rounded down to the nearest whole number and shows what the student was able to do at the time of testing. These are especially useful for general education teachers who might be more unfamiliar with the expectations for multilingual students. They can use these reports to jumpstart their planning and understanding of appropriate supports for their multilingual students. Now, something we wanna remind ourselves and the others that work with our multilingual students, the goal is not for students to simply exit services. We need these students to grow in their English proficiency every year. What's challenging is to figure out appropriate growth. So this is a look at the Tennessee Department of Education growth standard. On the left, you're gonna find the access score from the student's most previous test. On the right, you'll see how much that student will be expected to grow in a full year's time. This chart is really useful in determining if your student and your service to that student is effective if the student is on track. So let's look at some examples. So this student has a high composite for the year 2018-2019 at a 4.1, but the student actually regressed in their overall score the following testing year at a 4.0. So this is gonna merit a deeper look into what's going on with this student. Also, you might notice there's a gap in testing years. This student was unable to be assessed in the 2019-2020 school year due to the closures from the pandemic. Student B was a 2.2 in 2019. So if you look at the growth chart, we'd see that they'd be expected to grow at least 0.8 levels. This student did meet the growth standard because they were at a 3.5, 1.3 levels higher than the previous year, which is fantastic growth. This student, student C, was a 3.3 in 2019. So based on the growth chart, we would expect this student to grow at least 0.4 levels. This student did grow, but they didn't meet the growth standard. So using this standard really allows us to dig into what's happening with students on a case-by-case -case basis, gives us another level of understanding student success. I would encourage every school leader and multilingual educator to look into their students' growth standards, especially in light of the data gaps that might be pre present currently. You truly can get a better understanding of how students are learning and improving in their proficiency. The last piece and the next place that your students' reports are gonna be useful is in the individual learning plan, which is a requirement in the state of Tennessee for all multilingual students. So maybe you've heard the term ILP a lot, but what is it exactly? It's a learning plan that's written by teachers and approved by stakeholders that work with this student. You can read all the elements below that the Department of Education recommends is included in the ILP. Lots of schools are using online programs to generate these, such as Elevation, which is a great tool. We just wanna make sure that everyone involved is aware of what access scores that are used on these reports mean and how they help us understand student growth. To summarize, there's three types of reports that use access scores that are useful to us when serving our multilingual students. School-wide reports show us school-wide trends at each grade level. These can show us overall needs for student growth or areas where a majority of our students are excelling. Individual student reports are helpful, single-page reports that give insights into what students specifically can do. They show their current 
access scores and are wonderful for helping all stakeholders, teachers, parents, tutors, administrators, students, understand the student's current levels of English proficiency. Then our last piece, the ILP, is a learning plan that utilizes the access score to project goals for future growth. They have a lot more details about student services, growth expectations, and how we can help our students meet their goals. So thanks for joining us today. If you ever have questions, you can always reach out to me. I'm Mary at diverselearnerscoop.com. Also, be sure to check out our website to see our upcoming offerings, including our new fall intensives. We've got three great ones coming down the pike. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.